And we are live. Gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Mecca of Banter podcast. I believe this is episode 36 of season three, which we're moving and grooving. Uh, our, our seasons follow the Premier League schedule. So we have a couple more weeks left of season three before we kick it off with season four, which is kind of crazy, uh, just to say. Um, we have a jam-packed episode for the crew today. We have a lot to dive into. We have Champions League on the docket that we have to talk about after just the electrifying games that were last week. We have some huge games to talk about with the Premier League, and then we finally, finally get to celebrate a St. Louis City win on this podcast. Um, so without further ado, let's check in with the fellas. Um, you know, I'm Henry Wind. You can find me on Twitter at Henry Wind. I'm this week's host. Uh, it's a great week to be a Manchester United fan. You know, not everyone in this chat can say that they picked up points in the weekend. Good result. Uh, you know, Good result. Just finding our results. Uh, my United brother, Connor Sindobri. Um, What's going on, fellas? What's going uh, on Matthew with you? Here. Uh, it's your boy C-Dobes10 on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, it's great to be here. You know, it was a jam-packed sports weekend. A um, ton of good footy on, a ton of good sports. Uh, honestly, I'm okay with the 2-2 draw from United this weekend. I know we're going to dive into it later, but it's been been a lot worse stuff for us this season, so I'll take that. Um, and then St. Louis City kind of topped it off for me uh, yesterday with a, with a nice little win. Um, so happy to be here, fellas. Um, can't wait to talk about um, a few different teams towards the top of the table today. Been waiting a long time just to have any shit to be able to talk, so I'm very much going to take my moment to, to do that today. Um, so we're really looking here. forward to it. Um, Nicholas Hayflinger. So happy to have you on this week. I can't, I can't believe that this is the week you decided to come on this pod. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, 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 like multiple in a row. I miss one episode. You know. <laughs> like it's a reoccurring thing when we just get shit. Yeah. Now, just, yeah. just yeah. answer me this. Was it after the, the second goal or after the fourth goal that you decided that you were going to come to tonight's recording? <laughs> Which one was it? Oh, I was in the entire week. You knew it. You are trying to make up things. <laughs> Welcome to, be to the pod, fair. brother. To be fair, I'm upset. I thought you were going to start with me first, and I was totally going to start it off with what a great weekend to be a Chelsea supporter. <laughs> um, but obviously you stole the thunder, but it's okay. Both teams picked up three points for me, so I haven't been able to say that in a very long time and not often a lot this season. So very happy that City and Chelsea were able to get three points this weekend. Um, pumped to dive in, like Dove said, about some of the other games. Um, it was definitely a juicy weekend. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Hafey4. Great to have you, man. Um, before we move on to our, our, our last person, I, I do have a question. Uh, Nick, it's going to sound a little weird, but what's your favorite shape? Triangle. Dope's favorite shape? Probably square. There's a lot of good shapes out there. There's triangles, squares, there's pentagons, there's hexagons, there's octagons. And then we have the title gone, um, which is oh! Arsenal, uh, Lucas Winkleman, uh, bottling yet another title. Welcome to the chat. How are you doing today, my friend? How long did you have that written down for? I was about to say, that one, I feel like you could add a little bit yeah. more. That, that, kind of, that was kind of 34 minutes. Yeah, that, was yeah. that was kind of brutal. Um, no, man, I'm good. There's still six games to play. And we have Champions League football this week. Um, I know you cannot say that this season. And after Villa beating us, maybe not next season either. We'll find out. But uh, no, it, it it was a good weekend. Like like Dobe said, a lot of good sports on in general. Um, sad the way that, that Sunday went, but excited to talk about it. And I think that, uh, you know, I don't I don't think that it will be bad for us mentally. If anything, you know, it's, it's one of those things that um, like we had towards the end of last year will be a, a wake up call of sorts that, you know, we still have six finals to go in the league. And, you know, we, we had talked about it last week that city weren't going to drop any points and that we can't afford to either. Neither can Liverpool. So we'll see what happens, but I'm happy to be here. You can find me on Twitter at LCW 21. Happy to have you, man. Couldn't be a great episode this week without you. So happy to have you here. Um, gentlemen, it's time that we check in with our sponsors uh, over at Manscaped. Um, they've been sending us some nice little product. Uh, the Lawnmower 5.0, which is perfect for uh, a little spring cleaning. 
And when you're down uh, down there doing your spring cleaning with the Lawnmower 5.0, uh, it's important to check yourself for testicular cancer. Now, did you know that one man every hour, every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer? In fact, testicular cancer is the most common form of cancer amongst men aged 15 to 35. With April being National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, our friends over at Manscaped, Nick, I mean, in the in the middle of an ad read, man, it's insane. It's insane. Manscaped is a great company. They 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 you know they pay for their slot just like everyone else, and we're out here taking personal calls. It's insane. Uh, but with April being the National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, our friend over at Manscaped have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. Visit manscaped.com slash TCS to learn how to check yourself for early signs of cancer. And as always, you can use promo code MECCA20, that's M-E-C-C-A-2-0, for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Gentlemen, let's talk St. Louis City. Nicholas, I mean, if we... are all calling and they're telling me that they're feeling great after all of the perfect shaving that I've been able to do with the Manscaped Lawnmower 5.0. Damn, I mean... Wait, wait, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll, weave we'll, that in there. That's a good one. That's a good you, one. You, you may get like a 10-minute penalty if it rings again. You may have to mute, yeah. <laughs> mute Nick. Well, I, we <laughs> actually do that is when I do that, so my apologies. We, we actually don't get to talk about Chelsea. That's your punishment <laughs> if, <laughs> if it rings again. Um, but let's talk St. Louis City, fellas. We finally have a result to celebrate uh, with all of us. It was a gorgeous day in St. Louis, Missouri yesterday. Um, being at the stadium was immaculate. The vibes were high. Uh, and when we come away with a win, a one nothing win against Austin FC, which we needed so badly, what were y'all's takeaways of the game? One, when I think you've, we've already mentioned it a little bit, um, but with was obviously seeing the lineup. I was super pumped to finally see that we had somewhat of with coming into this game. Um, obviously, I don't think... I'm not thrilled like over the moon with the performance, but three points is three points. And I think Klaus had a moment of brilliance. I also think um, I don't, we don't have to get into this now, but AZ, I know we'll probably talk about him a little bit. I'm like, I don't like him at all anymore. And I've been seeing some Twitters on him out a little late um, in downtown St. Louis. So I don't know how I feel about that man anymore. <laughs> You said I've seen some Twitters. Um, no, yeah. man, I, I think starting off with, with the starting 11, it was something that we wanted to see. We wanted to see Alma on one side, Celio on the other side, and then Indy through the middle, and that's exactly what we got to see. Um, and I think the first half, as kind of annoying as it was, like there was a lot of stop, stop and start. Austin was, you know, kind of playing that terrorist football kind of style in the first half. We had a lot of things to be positive about. We had a lot of great possession. Indy was kind of finding these intricate spots. Even Ostruck was picking up balls in good positions in the field. Like there's a lot to lot to be positive about. The only thing that I think was missing was, you know, the final product. Like we didn't have a whole lot of shots. We didn't have a whole lot of created chances, but I felt really positive going into halftime. And uh, I just knew that had we not put in that, that goal uh, in the second half, I think that stadium would have quickly, quickly uh, turned on the players there, but can't really argue with the front force performance at all. Yeah. I, I think front to back, I, I think more so like us as fans that just, Three points is three points is three points. Like we've said that so many times. I think the fans just wanted to see a win. Um, obviously, Austin is is not exactly like the easiest team to ever play against. I like to keep possession, which kind of does benefit us. But I think I think front to back, like you got to credit credit Hebert coming in. I thought he was 100%. very very. I thought he was very very solid. I don't necessarily know if I'd go all the way and say he's like our third best center back option, but he's definitely. I think that there's an argument there if he continues to sort of step up and take his chance. Um, and then obviously just happy to see big the big Brazilian get on the score sheet. Um, it's like crazy that like if you try to find your striker's feet in the box that like he may potentially have a chance to score a goal and then he may do it. Like that's a very, very crazy concept um, to think about. But I, I, honestly, I think it's just three points. Like we didn't necessarily have Lewin in either to to sort of come back in that midfield. I honestly thought Ostrock did, did solid. I thought he had a better performance um, this week than he did last week. So he'll continue to improve. Um, Durkin again sort of held that down. I do think that 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 midfield three definitely lacks creativity a little bit, just in terms of they're great in possession, sort of great at breaking breaking up lines, great at sort of closing down those passing lanes. 
but they lack a little bit of creativity. Um, and then, like you mentioned, Hen, like Indy as that as, as that ten was definitely a difference maker for us. Like he was all over the field, and I completely disagree with the the fact that we took him off in the sixty what was it sixty second minute or sixty third yeah. minute or something like that. I completely disagree with that. Um, but at the same time, it's like I said, three points is three points. Like we have to be happy, and let's just hope that as we start to integrate um, Lewin back in this lineup, as we integrate Nilsson back in this lineup, um, we can go on a little bit of a, a winning streak here with a with a good run of games, but got to be happy you know i'm not i'm not here to sit and complain because we've just been asking for a win or sort of anything to build on and i think there's a little bit of base layer that we have some stuff to build on we're just missing a few key pieces yeah i totally agree um i feel like we're at this point we're shouting him out every single podcast but uh on twitter at chat city tactics uh his name is tactics with michael um probably the best the best post game analysis that's out Easily. there on Twitter Easily. Uh, for St. Louis city. Uh, if you're listening, you know, tactics with Michael, we'd love to have you on the pod. Um, but the one that he posted about yesterday's game was just fantastic. I think one of his big call outs was the right side specifically of Totland and Alm uh, in the, in the first half uh, Totland picking up the ball a lot at the halfway line driving. Um, and if you go back and you watch the goal back, um, one of the points he makes directly, you know, from this, he said, uh, can you imagine one year ago, one of our outside backs picking up the ball at the halfway line, driving 40 yards and then dishing the ball off for a cross and us scoring? It just would have never happened. And we're seeing that Totland is bringing something completely new um, to this team. We're obsessed with the guy on this podcast. We we talk about him every week. And I, I don't want it to be lost that he's just like that guy that plays so well and he never gets his flowers. So he uh he definitely has a lot of a lot of credit to take. Um we also got to see like a nice little cameo from Kojima. I think um I think he is about six inches away to the right from us talking about him all day today. Yep. Um he made that beautiful run through the center backs, got that ball in from Thor and just slightly missed. Um, you know, at, at first glance in real time, I thought that he should have slotted it home. Looking at the replay, it's a little, little bit challenging of a finish. You think that maybe he would have dinked it instead of pushing it around. If that was Landon Best, uh, you know, barreling down, he would have dinked it over the keeper. But uh, great to see from Kojima. Um, we just we we see a lot of promise uh, in him. And uh, Nikki, I don't remember if this was you that said this after the first game, but he he's kind of. He's taking his chances, even though, you know, they've been limited, but he's taking his chances in ways that we wish that we saw Miguel Perez take last year. Um, he's just bringing a little bit more to the game. He's quicker to read the game, and he's doing things, I think, that other players are not. Um, and I would just love to see him see, like, a consistent run of minutes. I'm not saying start the guy next week. I'm not saying that he's the first guy off the bench. But if he can string together, you know, 20, 25 minutes every game, it would be nice to see that progression. Um, the one I, thing that – go ahead, Nikki. No, I completely agree with you. I thought I, – I still think there's something there with him. I, I hope we keep him um, and he does get some more minutes. I, don't, I hope he's not going to be, like, similar to Miggy Perez. And I don't know – I can't believe I'm going to say this, but, like, maybe that – I think it's the college. The little bit of experience he had in college over Miggy, I think, shows in yeah. um, the way he plays. Like, I can't believe I'm giving the NCAA credit for making um, – a benefit towards someone's uh, development in soccer, but <laughs> here we are. Um, but I, I truly do think his chances that he's um, had on the field, he's done very well with them, and I hope he gets more of them. Yeah, yeah, he's just – he's a very smart player. Um, he's not going to be the guy that is the fastest, the strongest, or anything like that. He just reads the game incredibly well. I mean, obviously, that play that he was through on goal is the highlight of it, but he, I, I thought he had um, one tackle at about the halfway line – uh, that was just so smart. He just read the fuck out of the guy, won the tackle, and then we were able to break. Um, unfortunately, he just had Thor playing in front of him. And I think that that is uh, – I remember when he came last year, um, it was such an odd signing. Like, I think that we thought we were getting someone that we weren't as fans. Um, his decision-making continues to just confuse the fuck out of me. Um, there was a game towards the end of last season where – all we needed to do was kill time 
And instead of doing that, instead of either pumping the ball long or taking it to the corner or anything like that, Thor tried to like make a pass towards the middle and it got intercepted. We got countered on and scored against it. I, I can't re recall the game, but we were winning like four, nothing, five, nothing, something like that. And we gave up a goal at the end of the game um, to, you know, lose the shutout. And I remember Parker and Nilsson and Berkey were just screaming at this guy so pissed and we actually saw the exact same thing happen barring the goal um this weekend it was at the end of the game instead of just you know taking the ball to the corner possessing it he tries to take on two or three guys they get countered on potentially leads to a potential goal and you just see nilson and parker losing their mind at him for just not thinking the game and i think that that's something that you know as much as we still even question the starting 11 of who's going to start week over week and who's going to contribute. I think when you look at the bench, it's not exactly the best either. So um, I thought that was fascinating. And then the other thing that has left St. Louis city fans scratching their head over their, the last 48 hours certainly um, has been a uh, big Sam, uh absent from the squad, um, not even on the bench. Uh, and then Carnell and his post game press conference, says something potentially cryptic if you want to read into it, which he basically, he gets asked about Sam's absence and he says that he's not interested in talking about that. He's only interested in talking about the players that played today and left, uh, you know, everything or emptied the tank for their team. Some people are reading into that as maybe taking a shot at Sam, that he's getting a little bit too big for his britches. Some people are reading into it as just, you know, he's not talking about players that were included. I don't know. Only time will tell um, if, you know, that gets squashed or if it'll turn into a larger issue with Sam. But I found that to be very fascinating uh, as a fan and kind of reading the post-game conference. That's that's one that, to me, and I know we were playing pro clubs last night and Henny were on there, but we were talking about it to where, you just hope it's not one of those things. And again, we're just sort of speculating here, but you hope it's one of those things where Sam's not too big for his britches yet, you know, to where he did come in, he did score a ton of goals. But like we've been saying this whole time that City needs to commit to his style of play. And that also means sort of not necessarily commit to a forward, but kind of commit to a forward because those two, Sam and Klaus, two polar opposite types of players. And you would think that what made Sam have a spot on this team instead of leave is the fact that he came in and took his chances last year and made it so that there was even a conversation in and of itself. So I, my hope is that he gets back to that a little bit. And, you know, obviously I think that I, I texted it because I didn't even realize he wasn't on the bench. I think that in that game, if we had Sam for the last 15 minutes up a goal, like you bring him on to just run a back four who's been playing for 80 minutes. It's like, that's exactly what you need. So obviously as fans, we hope it's nothing serious. But for me, it's like, Sam, you're a dude that, has worked your ass off to get here. You earned this spot. You weren't given it. Now earn the spot now. Like come yeah. on 10 minutes and score and make Carnell have to make that tough decision. And honestly, if that's what it is, like I'm all for Carnell doing what he did. If he's too big for his britches, leave him out and make him earn something. And guess what? Klaus scores. Klaus is going to start this weekend. Like that's what happens when you have those attitude issues. Again, speculation. But from kind of what we've heard, that's what it sort of sounds like to me is it's more disciplinary than anything. That's what that's what I'm hoping that that he kind of figures it out. Carnell continues to you know have the situation under control because fact of the matter is we go into the weekend with Sporting Kansas City. That's going to be a massive game. Yep. Um, you know we're we're neck and neck in the table, um, but then obviously it's a huge pride game. You know you just you just want to beat those guys, and so I think we have a lot to prove coming off of what was a disastrous postseason against Kansas City, um, a team that's not exactly flying. They scored two goals against Miami at the weekend. So we owe them. We, yeah. we owe them for we definitely we owe do. Them for sure. Um, um, so we'll we'll see how it plays out. The the last thing I want to say is that I don't think we're far away from fellas. And what I mean by that is like we've been clamoring for Lewin to step up and be our DP player. And we saw Indy, I liked the wide players. Obviously I'd maybe slide Nilsson in for in for Hebert. We're not far away from getting to that 11 I think we're all been hoping for. And it may just come at the perfect time against Sporting this weekend. Like, we may we may be getting the, the right lineup. Lewin hasn't played in weeks. He's fresh. Nilsson's yeah. just got a few minutes. He's fresh. Like, to me, we're, we're close to maybe getting a little momentum here, and hopefully this was just the start. I hope I hope that the sub, though, is Lewin for Ostruck, and it's not Lewin for, for yeah, AD. Yeah, I, 
I agree. I agree. I, I didn't like to, personally. I didn't like any of his subs this weekend. I was just like, we finally started to get some momentum. We scored, and then he just was like, no, oh, no, we're going to take everybody off. I thought that was sense. so weird. Didn't make sense, but we'll see. He struck in the yellow in like the first what like five minutes of the game. Yeah, yeah, that was bad. That was bad. We'll see. Um, gentlemen, let's dive into the weekend recap. A lot of spicy, spicy, spicy games to talk about. And we're actually going to start with the most recent game. Um, just honestly, to get it out of the way, uh, you know, <laughs> three points for, uh, man, I say 3-0 over there, uh, Nikki. Um, 6-0 route, the Chelsea Football Club over uh, the Everton Football Club. Uh, Everton are shockingly bad. Boom. They were... Very they bad. were so bad. They were good um, for 10 minutes. They were very good the first 10 minutes. They should have scored, but then it went all downhill. If they go down, finally, if they finally go down, they deserve it. Um, but, Nikki, I'm going to give you your flowers because you deserve it. Um, speak, my friend. Speak and stand on that business. Love that. I mean, I will say not everyone can get three points against Everton, so we'll start there. But... Um, <laughs> Cole Palmer, I mean, I don't even want to beat around the bush or, like, talk about anything else. I just – I think he's brilliant. Um, I think the lineup coming in today is something that I have been shocked Poach hasn't done more. Um, I know with Enzo not uh, being in the lineup today because he's injured, of course, another injury added to our list. Um, but uh, a midfield of Caicedo or Enzo and Gallagher and Palmer. I've always wanted Palmer as a 10. I just feel like he's so brilliant. i um, creating going forward. I'm um, getting him on the ball as much as possible is so important. Um, and I think that was shown today. Um, I thought he had a world-class performance. Um, I, I also thought the people around him helped him out a lot. So like, I think Mudrick had a hell of a game. Yes. He doesn't have crazy stats to back it up. He didn't have a goal or an assist. Um, but I still think he was creating um, a lot when he had the ball and taking people on and making good decisions, um, which I haven't seen as much this year. I also think Jackson didn't have an awful game. Um, there's moments where I was like, oh, he actually has somewhat of feet and he doesn't look like Bambi when he's driving with the ball. Um, so I thought that was promising. Um, I know you guys are going to want to talk about uh, the penalty beef. Um, I, I, Obviously, you don't love to see that. You don't love to see your team arguing. But I also playing or looking at it from a different perspective. I'm excited that they're hungry to score goals. Um, and I'm happy that their passion showing. I also love that uh, Gallagher stepped up and kind of uh, made a captain's um, decision um, and gave Palmer the ball. Um, obviously, the reactions afterwards, um, like I said in the group message, any acknowledgement from Nico to Cole, I think, is enough um, after that. Um, but uh, besides that, I also think Chalaba had a great game. Um, I'm happy to see him back in form and playing in our starting um, lineup more. It's, again, another back four that we haven't seen, or it hasn't been consistent. It's a different lineup from the last one. Um, so I'm happy we were able to get a clean sheet as well. Um, but also excited to see your guys' thoughts on how you guys thought the game went. I thought the first goal was disgusting. Just yeah. so good. Disgusting. It was, and and quite honestly, I don't know what I like more: the move on Branthwaite, just the the disgusting nutmeg, or just the the casualness of the, the finish. Of the finish. Yeah. It was just like I, I didn't think it was going in because he hit it so nonchalant. I know I was, but he's he we said this before. He does that. He he never like smokes one in or anything like that. He puts it with perfect pace and sneaks it in the side corner. I thought oh, it was brilliant. I think I think in um, we're gonna have to let him give his uh, official thoughts on Palmer here in a second. But um, I, I think that Palmer was a he was a shoe in for the Young Player of the Year, and I think he's firmly now put himself in the conversation for just Player of the Year in general. Like he 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 has to be in that conversation. He's tied with Holland. I think the whole thing with the pen, and we'll we'll this is just the part of the maturation of this Chelsea team. Like I personally think that. I love the hungriness, but that's one of those where if you're Cole Palmer, you're on a hat trick, give the ball away. But that has to be on him to do. Like we saw, yeah. this, is, this isn't just, this isn't just a United thing, but we started at the beginning of the season, and I don't know if you remember this, but like Rashford was massively yeah. struggling. Bruno didn't even have a single goal against Everton, and just 
took the ball. Rashford didn't beg for it and gave Rashford the ball to get his confidence scoring. And then he scored the following week as well. So I don't mind Palmer taking it because that, he, that's his job. I just think in the circumstances today, on a hat trick, if he chooses to give the ball to Medwicki or to Jackson, that's a confidence booster. But that just comes with maturation. Like he's young. That's the only thing that I may be able to say the downside is it's it's a it's a we thing, not an I thing. And I obviously I think he's fantastic. He's goal scoring, his his creativity. That's just one of those where three years from now he's on a hat trick. I think he probably gives that ball up, if I'm just being honest. But I don't, I don't mind the hungriness. I think it's on Palmer to do that, though. I don't think that people should ask for it. If he wants to give it away, he's the penalty kick taker that Poach has assigned, then you give the ball away. I yeah, agree. wasn't it like a big thing a couple of weeks ago, months ago, where Poach like came out and said, I let the players decide yep. who's doing the whatever, <laughs> that, and now like this. Literally, that was literally my response in the group message that I was like, I don't like the flopping of him going yeah. back on his word. Um, but because you're 100% right, when this happened with Sterling and Palmer and Sterling took the penalty and miss, um, he came out and was like, "I, it's a player's decision. I allow them to decide on the field. And then now to come out and say, um, I've decided it's Cole Palmer is just completely going back on his word. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm it. not against it. By I no can... means am I against it because he hasn't missed a penalty. And if That's we have a penalty, I want us to score a goal and Cole Palmer should be taking it. I 100% agree with that. Poachers opinion can change throughout the his viewpoint on it, I don't like. Well, he, it can change. Like Palmer yeah, can go, from being, he can go go from being like a solid player to now he's in the form of his life to where it's like, dude, you're the penalty taker now. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, he at that point in in the career, he was six for six on pens. So like now he's he was eight for eight in this game. So like I just I feel like it could have been a similar argument then. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I you know, like Dope said, you're allowed to change your mind. Um, is what it is. Um, yeah, it's man, it's kind of crazy to hear you say that, that he's like, you know, creeping into that conversation for player of the year. He's, bro, he's firmly in it. He's not creeping. He's yeah. in it. But like, <laughs> it, it is kind of crazy to think about because you have like your normal, quote unquote, your like normal uh, players that are in that conversation. Holland, De Bruyne, Saka last year, all of them have been. Like, I, I don't want to call De Bruyne underperforming. I think that's so harsh because he's been injured for a ton of the season. But, like, Holland is tied with Cole Palmer on goals. He's only one above Ollie Watkins. This time last year, he was well away with it. And then you have Saka, who's been – he's played well, but he hasn't had the same numbers that he had last year. There's all these different things. Like, you just – I don't know. I feel like this year there hasn't been that, like, standout person that, like, you know, we're in April and we say we know that it's going there. It's it's, it's really odd. I think if we're in top four, it's not even a question. I, I yeah, think but it's you're not. So. No, I agree. That's I just, I just, I Dove's bringing up yeah. is shocking to me. I think the fact that we're in ninth place right now. Yes, he's the most valuable player on our team. He's all of his stats. I think should go against that. But at the end of the day, I don't think we can. Bro, bro, you're Everton that. without it. You, you are Everton. You are Everton without him. I don't know. That's true. I mean, probably. I mean, I think Cole Palmer is insane, so, like, I'm not going to deny that. But, like, I also think – it also – it depends on what you value as player of the year. Like, is it is it the person has the biggest impact on the worst team? Because then absolutely it's Cole Palmer. But, like, if you think it's the person who had the best season to help a winning side win a title, then I think it should probably be another person. Man, I I, I can't help but think about this. Southgate is going to have to just make some decisions, bro. Like My favorite part about it is, is like, no matter what, he's going to get it wrong because somebody's going to be mad. Totally. Like, yeah. that's, that's just the relationship that he's built or the, the relationship he's built with the fans. Is no matter who he decides to take, he's going to be wrong to somebody, which is why I love it so much. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is that. But, like, you think about that attacking – there, there's a couple of people that have cemented themselves in the starting lineup from, you know, from yeah. the England point of view. You have Jude, you have Declan Rice, you have Harry Kane. Um, every other position is pretty much like a pick your poison. And they're every, so, and they're and so and deep too. They are, but, but, but it's like, yeah, you, you put Saka on the right, which my guess is that's what's going to happen. You put Saka on the right, but then like, that's also where Cole Palmer plays. That's also where Phil Foden plays. Like, but then you I think, think Phil about the name on this on that sheet already now. But but you think about Foden as the ten. 
Yeah. Like that's where Bellingham plays. That's where Cole Palmer plays. And then you think about left wing. Like if you, it's just like figuring out what the blend of those guys is going to be. The funniest, the funniest thing that I I've seen on Twitter recently is someone put like a, a photo of like a, it was like, I don't know, Foden, Kane, Saka, um, Cole Palmer, Jude, and Bellingham. And they're like, what stop Jude it? Jude and is, Bellingham. Sorry, uh, Jude and, and Declan. Um, and said, so, like, what's stopping this England front six? And the guy just responded, like, a counterattack. It was just <laughs> so funny. I was like, that's oh, Should have been just Southgate. Yeah, yeah. literally. That's, Southgate what, I, that's what I thought he was going to A better answer. Southgate at all, man. In this conversation, we have just named seven world class players that would start at any national team. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, like barring only a couple of players in the world, like you know that like Mbappe gets in over that, like he gets in on the left wing position. You get Vinny probably in that left wing position, and yeah, there's just not a whole lot of other like right wingers you would take over that crop. Um, probably not a whole lot of cams that you would take over that crop. I do think that I said I texted earlier. I don't think there's another team in the world that can just let 20 goals and whatever assists go and it mean absolutely zero besides Man City. Like, that's insane. That, like, they just let this kid go and they didn't even skip a beat. Like, they haven't even lost a night of sleepover, which is insane. That's uh, how deep they are. I yeah. Know. Pep, Pep in a press conference today was like, uh, like, what? I thought two weeks ago we were underperforming and I thought that we were the worst city team we've seen in six years. And now... Now everything's good again. He was like, what? That's crazy. That's wild. Um, but uh, we we have other games. We have other games to talk through. Um, Andy Hoover is not on tonight's podcast. Shout out Papa Hoov. Uh, it's his birthday. They're, they're, they're getting some dinner. Shouts. So uh, the timing, like any Andy other- Hoover lost for nothing over the weekend. And he sent in his official club statement, which will be read by our very own Connor Sindobri. Connor. <laughs> To be honest, it sounds like I would I could say you could just switch the team names. Um, Literally. Uh, official statement from Young Yid. It was shit. It was shit. Team was shit. Players were shit. Subs were too late. Scared of the venue and the occasion. Disastrous way to start the hardest stretch of the matches to end the season. May God have mercy on Spurs. Newcastle and Saudi money scam artists, and I hope they have issues with financial fair play for the rest of their existence. And that's his statement. And then he sent in a little gif of the Europa League saying, see you gentlemen on Thursday, Um, which is just top tier. That's just top tier banter. I can Uh, only imagine that house because Max is a Newcastle supporter. So that's what he was texting because I I texted him being like, all right, who I need you guys to win. I hate Newcastle. And he was like, all right, let's ride. And it was like two minutes in. He's like, I might have to leave this group message right now. <laughs> yeah, dude. In house. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy, bro. Like, I mean, at least like me, we woke up for the 630 and we were watching it. And like they were, Spurs just absolutely collapsed. Like. Nemo should have scored twice. Like it could have yeah. been too nothing to start the game. And then Newcastle took over and it was a wrap. Uh, Isaac. And- dog he's a dog bro like i think you know like newcastle is not the newcastle of last year they but they did you know put up a performance like this which is fantastic but isaac just really has that dog in him i think i think newcastle is not his last stop on his journey of of clubs that he'll play for um He's pretty, I mean, maybe he'll go to Chelsea, but like the thing is, and, and call me superstitious. I, I just have, I have so many uh, thoughts about strikers going to Chelsea for whatever well, reason. I'm probably on the same train as you because I think it's a dead position at our club right now. And the thing is, though, so it's, it, it, it's across so many different managers, now owners, yep. now, like different teams. It's just the striker position at Chelsea is just. Yeah, but I mean, we also had some, I mean, Diego Costa balled out, um, Drugba balled out. Like, we still have some notable strikers that played through our clubs as well. Can, can, I, can I give an ESAT comp and you guys can either tell me I'm an idiot, but just who he reminds me of? For sure. Okay. I don't think the physical presence, but I think the type of skill he reminds me of is Latan. Like, Ooh, that's nice. He's he Swedish, man. It, well, he, he just has that to where, like, he can score those those bangers in the box, but he also has, like, Zlatan's feet were so underrated. Yeah, 100%. Where he could beat somebody, pull a Castro, do a do a step over, and Isak has that same ability where he's electric in behind, but then if you get him out wide, he will make you look stupid if, if you step too early. Yeah. I know 
I know who is going to hate me for saying this, but I thought Van de Ven had a shocker. Well, like, wait, brother, how do we not mention that? Like, yeah, yeah, the, the that meme, meme? <laughs> the meme is insane. Version. This was it's a very insane. bad weekend for defender slipping. It was a it very was. bad weekend it for was. defender it slipping. Was. There's a lot to talk about here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Van de Ven, uh, not his best. Uh, he'll be fine. He'll bounce back. It's okay. Um, the slip was the slip. Not much you can do about it in that moment. Um, and speaking of slipping, Manchester United. There it is. Dropping points in Willy Kambala. Uh Big slip. You Big. saying his last name described him falling perfectly. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, Dobes. Yeah. Uh, I know you watched, which is... <laughs> kind you, of. You did. Kind of. You did. Gr- Griff watched the whole game, and once that once he was watching the whole game and it was 2-2, I stopped watching the game, so... It, it is kind of funny, man. The amount of times that you're talking about Griff wanting to watch United, I feel like he's kind of this closet fan. That well, I was about to say, he's probably watched more than Dobes. It sounds like. So, so it was. Um, I started watching the game. We were driving to Quincy for the alumni game this weekend, and it was. I believe it was one one. And I went to the bathroom. We were at the, we were at the, um, the soda pop shop having some sodas, so- and, and I came out of the bathroom. And I turn and I see Jordan and Nate just smiling at me. Oh. And I, I was like, don't even fucking say it. And it was like, 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two, one. <laughs> um, but this, it's, I, I, we've said it so many times with this with this United team. It's the same thing. It's the consistency. I mean, shout out Bruno for stepping up and doing what he did. Um, but at the same time, I, I think these issues stem with, and, and truthfully, Willie's going to be fine. It's a, ter- it's a terrible yeah. mistake. Um, and not to pull a Jorgen Klopp and sort of complain about the field a little bit, but the fault, the fact that the game had started and you're passing the ball, you could see water come up was just insane. Um, so he did slip, but you got to credit Solanke. Solanke, I think he's, he just set the record for Bournemouth for, for a striker for most goals what in a single. He's, 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 he's so good. He's class. Um, but it's it's the same thing we've seen with United. It's you can, We can be down on the ball a little bit, but the mentality we break down, um, even just the, the sequence of play to where Solanke was one-on-one with Kambala is like, part of the problem um so i don't necessarily blame willie he's going to be fine um he had a great performance at the weekend uh the weekend before same thing we've seen with united I- i'm getting a little sick of week in and week out seeing casemiro do these like hero tackles to where all of a sudden they break through our first line which is fine and that's where you need like a mobile six to be able to move his feet get to the correct spot either put in a tackle if you don't put in the tackle at least disrupt the play and too many times we cast a mirror where he's not necessarily in a bad position to where he's at, but he makes these lunging tackles that if you don't miss it, there's nobody behind him because our six. And then you have three or four players running against a 19 year old Harry Maguire and Juan Basaka Delo who's pinching in. And it's just a disaster. Um, I know Hen and I were texting today that like, I don't necessarily think that Casemiro should leave the club. I don't think because just because I don't, unless Saudi comes in and gives us a fucking, like massive amount of money for him. I just don't think he's going to go anywhere else for a ton of money. But we need a mobile six, whether that's you play Kobe there and decide he's that, choose to play Mount as an eight or go sign an eight. Personally, I want to go sign John Neves and make him our six. But it's just the same struggles that we've seen. It's the same lack of consistency. It's the same lack of mentality. And when you watch this game, I don't think there's a ton that you can like blame on Ten Hag either. Like, I don't think that there's a ton that you can fault him for in that game. Like both goals are clearly preventable by the players on the field. Yeah. Um, but truthfully, 2-2, Bournemouth's a good side. I was worried about this game because Bournemouth has been in demon mode for for kind of like, you know, what the money they spent on players. They've been fantastic this, se- this season. And you're always nervous with Solanke because he's a dog. Like he he, yeah. he gets a half chance and he, he makes you pay. Um, so 2-2, this was another opportunity that we missed with Spurs dropping points. Truthfully, like there's no excuse for this United team not to be in the top four with how Spurs and Villa have sort of played over the past couple of weeks. But it's the same thing. We're just not willing to take our chance and move forward. Luckily, we have a pretty decent run of games moving forward. But it's like we played Coventry at the weekend, a team that's in the league below. I, I don't necessarily have a ton of confidence even going into that game. So yeah. same thing we've been saying for a while, fellas, lack of consistency. Yeah, I – um. We've made it to – we're recording this right now, basically 7 p.m. on Monday night. Um, I was convinced that Ten Hag was going to get sacked today. I was about to uh, ask you. Yeah, and, 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 and the thing is, the thing is, is right after 
the Bournemouth game. I did put in the group chat. I don't agree with it um, because I still believe that Ten Hag's the right guy. But I just think that United's going to get to the point where they are going to sack him before the end of the season. And I don't agree with that. Um, I I do think that there's so much that needs to happen behind the scenes. There are so many players that need to not be at the club anymore. Um, and I just think that he's going to get the sack before we get the chance to see that happen. Um, so I'm glad that I made it to Monday and that still hasn't changed. Um, I will say we lose to Coventry at the weekend. Bring on Southgate. It, it, no, I think it'll be like an, uh, a Solshire signing to the end of the season. Um, and they'll oh, go with Southgate in the summer. I fucking love it, though. Bro, the, I mean. Just, just one more always at the wheel ring around Old Trafford. For all <laughs> it's just like, I think that's what's going to happen. But to be honest with you, I think United got bailed out of this game. I think, I think for me, obviously, the penalty call for us, I'm like, let's fucking go. We, we need a penalty we so bad. One. We were we were. One. But you look at it from any other fan base that's not United, and you just think that's the softest penalty yep. you've ever seen. And and what's weird is like I feel like for the amount of cameras that are in these stadiums, we didn't really see like a good look at it. And basically, what they were saying was that there seemed to be like a a motion towards the ball, this but in the happening. replays, it just looked like it just hit off of his elbow directly, like on the court. Like I don't know. So. I, as soon as I saw his it, reaction doesn't help him at all either. Like the moment it hits off his arm, he kind of is like, like he yeah. Kind of so almost the field. he deserved it. That call wasn't even the worst penalty decision of April. Like, I, yeah, totally. I don't totally, totally, agree with that. Totally. I've seen way worse. Like, yeah, I mean, you got three of them in the last two weeks. So, like, I mean, we've seen we've seen some bad calls, but I think that we were we were lucky to get that call because without that, like, we're we're losing to Bournemouth, and that's atrocious. But I. I think I have officially uh, like not checked out because I'm still going to be watching every game. I'm still going to be like, you know, cheering for the team and everything. I just feel like I've accepted who we are at the moment. Top four is so far out of our, uh, out of our hands and we'll be lucky, honestly, to, to get into Europa league. We'll be very, very lucky to do so. Um, So I think pressure uh, from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm not putting any pressure on United. Nothing will surprise me anymore. There's just so many players that are off the pace. Um, I disagree with you, Dobes. I think Casemiro does need to leave. Um, I think if he's still here, he's on the bench. He's just going to be taking up space. Uh, I would rather have a younger six in there and then a mobile six that we go out and get. So uh, we'll see. Um, notably, uh, Liverpool also dropped points. Um we we just have to call God it bless. up. Um, and I, I mean, it was a great hate watching day, baby. It was a great hate watching day. I mean, just just great for the vibes. Um, I would like to share a tweet um, from Connor Sandobri. Um, I know that we have like our own United corner, and we uh, we like to talk about this stuff uh, on the podcast. But if you saw the text thread between Connor and myself. It, uh, it goes much deeper than that. I can't find it at the moment, so I apologize. But essentially, what we're looking at is uh, Liverpool's quadruple winning season where uh, it's one last ride for all of... Yep, here it is. Ten Hag's first season with a depleted Manchester United squad, third in a League Cup. Klopp's potential quadruple winning with the best Liverpool squad, third in a League's Cup. Here we go. <laughs> oh, baby. Uh, open bus tour, farewell Klopp, dropping points. See you later. Um, on to another great game. Uh, a 2 nothing win for Aston Villa over the mighty Arsenal. Um, do we want to let Lucas talk about this one? Yeah, do we, do we want to let Lucas talk about this one first, or do we want to chime in? I say you, I say you let me, I say you let me go, and then you guys can chime in as I'm talking and, and, Game did you hear what I said? Though? Though? I, like, yeah, I didn't. I said good evening, and you didn't react. Good evening. To it, so I feel it. Like, yeah, I didn't hear you. Okay. Um, Bitch. Okay. So, yeah. Speaking of consistency, Dobes, we have been the most consistent I've ever seen us over the last eleven games. Sorry, ten games outside of Sunday. Um, but I I want to start by calling out all of those bitch ass fans that left the stadium early. Uh, that is just brutal to see for any club. 
um, you know, we, we've had such a great season and, and even a better 2024 specifically. It was our first loss on the Prem this year, and it was just so disheartening to see them get up and leave before the game was over. When when Leon Bailey scored, that was the first time this year that we've gone down in a game. So it doesn't make sense to me. Those are the fans that should be sitting in the rafters or not even going to the games in the first place. Um, so that was super... What, what was the, like... What was the Twitter world like saying about that like did people agree with that? Like, i honestly like i honestly line? am not an avid twitter user i need to be better about it but i just don't spend a ton of time on there so yeah. i'm sure i could do some digging <laughs> and and find it real quick um but i know i know that um that ian wright you know had something to say about it in in their you know talk show that they do um, or maybe it was in an interview or something like that. But I, I did see something on Instagram talking about how disappointed he was too, that, you know, you can be doing so well. And then as soon as things go bad, you just ditch like that. Um, and I completely agree with him. I think that, you know, so many of these fans have spent so many of the, of the last years outside of last year, watching a terrible Arsenal team for the most part, um, that, you know, now that we are, playing well you know all things considered um that as soon as something does go wrong and we again go down for the first time this year um seeing them leave was you know not good so um i do want to say fair play to villa though they looked good probably the best game that i've seen them play this year um ali watkins is fucking nails telemans played well i mean martinez played well too Rang. we also got we also got lucky that yeah they rang the post twice telemans was oh disgusting um for the trissard though man you gotta score that changes the yes, game yes yes but even more so kai takes way took way too long on the ball gabriel jesus just is not converting i think he, of of players who have played as many minutes as he has or more, I think he has the worst conversion rate um, from like shot attempts to shot on target or shot attempts to goals or shot on target to goals. One of those things, regardless, you don't want to be that guy in any of those categories. So the fact that he is that makes it very hard to watch. Um, yes, Trissard has to score that too, but we had other chances. There were several times that a couple of times that Kai got through balls and just was taking way too long to get a shot off. Um, and you know, either shot it wide, hit the side of the net, or um, got tackled and lost the ball in the first place. So I think that we were expecting to have more of the ball, which we did, but our press wasn't working, um, and they improved as the game went on, and we went backwards. But they were the better team. You know, I think that there's not a ton more to say about that. I also did, speaking of, you know, being disappointed that fans were leaving the stadium, one other thing that I was super disappointed in was, I don't know if you guys watched the whole game, but did you guys see Zinchenko kick the ball out towards the end of the game? Yep. What the fuck is he that. doing? What, ha what happened? So I forget which Villa player it was, but we were, we were down at that time. There was a Villa player that like went down at half or whatever it was, probably, you know, bullshit per usual, but regardless... He went, he went down and Zinchenko, we were on a break or we, you know, we, we had an odd man rush and Zinchenko has it probably at like the, the 40 maybe. And he's in the middle of the pitch and just turns to the side and kicks it straight out of bounds across the field laterally. I get, I get why players do that sometimes. If it was earlier yeah, in the but game, in that situation. that's what I'm saying. If, if it was earlier in the game, fair play but shit out yeah why why when we're down and we're competing for the top of the table and that's such an important game every game from here on out is why are you just like giving up like that like yeah i i respect players wanting to be like good humans and respectful and like i am the first one to do that but like in that scenario play on until the ref blows the whistle and no no fan is gonna think twice in that situation except maybe a couple villa fans but for the most part no fan is going to look at that and be like zinchenko's a piece of shit for having the ball in that totally. space and not kicking it out of bounds especially being in the middle of the field it made no sense to me and that was also super frustrating there were a lot of frustrating things about this game from our inability to finish to the fans to zinchenko doing that um 
yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, it was just like a, a, a blip and I don't foresee it happening the rest of the season, but what a fucking awful time for it to happen. Um, yeah. What do you, Winks, what do you make of, and this is me actually seeing a bunch of Arsenal Twitter. What do you make of the lineup? Cause I know obviously it's hindsight, but I saw a lot of like Arsenal Twitter sort of complaining just about like, cause Kai has been so successful as the nine and people are sort of complaining, complaining about Zinchenko. Obviously you saw him on the, the Bailey goal as your left back. He was all the way in the right wing. Like, what do you make of the lineup? Because I, I did see a ton of Arsenal fans just saying that he, they didn't think Arteta got it right. I obviously champions like midweek too, but yeah, totally. I've totally. I've been yeah, and that that's the thing. And I think that Jorginho is gonna probably start in the middle and Kyle play up top. But so that that's that's like the the only thing. And you know we we've seen Villa be a little off form recently, or at least this year. Like you know they at the beginning of the season and first half of the season specifically, they looked very good. Um, actually scratch that. Maybe the beginning of the season, they didn't do too hot, but like, regardless, they picked it up. I was, I was happy with the timing that we were playing Villa because of their, you know, recent form, but I, it's one of the Declan Rice said it after the game that in his presser that we have, you know, we have six finals to go. And I said it, you know, in the intro, but I was quoting him, you know, he said, we have six finals to go and and we have to get every, give it everything. And I think that we talked about it last week that it's going to be interesting to see how squad rotations go between city and us specifically. And obviously they're infinitely deeper than we are, but we're not, not deep by any means. Um, So I, I was expecting some sort of rotation, but, you know, it's one of those things that when when you're tied on aggregate with Bayern Munich playing away, you know, three days That's later, insane. you can't, yeah. you can't, you almost can't not make some sort of change, and you have to live, you know, with either the good that happens or the consequences of it. Um, and I think that we have to live with those consequences, and you know, have a short memory about it, and hopefully, you know, that's what Arteta told the guys, but. Um, I think that in a perfect world, not having to play Bayern Munich away, we could have played Kai up top and Jorginho in the middle with Odegaard and, and Declan. So disappointed to say the least. I've been, I've been saying this about Arsenal. And I, I picked Arsenal to win the league, um, but I've been saying this about Arsenal forever. And truthfully, I didn't expect this result. Um, did it make me happy because I had to listen to Griff give me shit the entire day before? Of course it did. But I think the biggest thing with Arsenal is like, it's who's going to be the guy like who's going to be like it's the lack of nine because i saw a stat today when they were showing the cole palmer at the top of the um at the top of the the scoring charts and it's like for arsenal not to have a player like in the top six or seven in terms of goal scoring is like that could be the difference right there of having a guy that you can continue to rely on games like this but at the same time like villa's just good man like that was an Unai Emery masterclass. Yeah. Like he, he he did exactly what they had to do in order to frustrate frustrate Arsenal, and it and it worked to a T. And I said this to Griff, I could not fucking believe when I saw the eleven that Leon Bailey was not in the eleven. Like knowing that Zinchenko likes to pinch inside, and him playing on that right hand side, I thought that there was going to be that space. And the moment he scored, I texted him. Um, I don't think the league's over. I do have to give myself credit. I did say City was going to rattle off twenty five in a row, and they've done twenty seven. And you couldn't afford to drop games, but what I've seen, we've seen out of City, like they're not invincible, and they have a tough run of games too. So I don't think this is over by any chance. But I, I do think that this is one of those at home against Villa, like that would have been Liverpool dropping points. You guys kind of would have been in the, the proverbial driver's seat if you say if you would have won. I don't think it's over, but we'll see. Yeah, we we talked about it last week, but City. Uh, probably the last several episodes, but City aren't going to be dropping points. Um, so an awful, an awful time to do that. I, I want to get your thoughts as we transition from the weekend recap into the Champions League. Uh, we saw four great games, just everything that you want in uh, in Champions League games, minus the fact that away goals don't matter anymore like they used to. That would have been the icing on the cake. Um, but let's actually start with Arsenal and Bayern. Um, 2-2 aggregate uh, coming off of the Emirates and now going back um, to Bayern Munich being at home. Kind of a crazy game, kind of back and forth uh, with a lot of action. Harry Kane with the proverbial, you know, 
goal at the Emirates, but um, maybe not as confident this week as you were last week about this game. Not maybe not as confident, but still confident. I think that we've been one of the best teams in the world on the road this year. Um, and we will, we have fans that are allowed to travel. I think that, you know, something that I said last week was that we needed to take advantage of, you know, all of the scenarios, Byron's form, um, them not having any fans, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we, we didn't fully, but I think that at the very least, you know, going down to one in the first half, I was stoked when, you know, when, when we, when Saka scored in the first half pretty early on in like the 10th or 12th minute, but, um, you know, I'm glad that we didn't give up, especially at home. Um, it could be worse. We could be down in aggregate. So going into it, I'm, I'm still confident with how we've performed on the road. And I think as long as, you know, Arteta gets the lineup right. And I think he had it right in the first leg. I think that, you know, we just made two defensive errors. Um, from both of our center backs. And I, I think that that's something that doesn't happen often. And I don't foresee those happening two games in a row to the same team. So um, I, I still like our chances for sure. I think it'll be a fun game. It's going to be loud as hell. Um, two or excuse me, three key, three key, I guess, players missing for Byron. Obviously Davies suspended is huge. Yeah. That's massive. Um, Coleman got injured and I think Nabry got injured as well this weekend. So I think mm-hmm. all three of those players are, are I know obviously Davies. That's, a, that's hurt, a lot of speed. But I know I know Coleman. They said I think it was out till late April, early May. So that's you. I mean that's huge. The uh, a week, a week is a long time in football. Uh, obviously, with the the craziness of the results over the weekend, I completely forgot about the fact that Saka dove so hard at the end of the game <laughs> in the Champions League. I like completely blanked that out of my mind until right now. Uh, what an insane decision for Saka to do. But I guess without diving there, he couldn't do his signature limp off. So, um, you know, you take what you can. Um, I thought Sané's run to draw the penalty was insane. insane. Just insane, dude. I think, I, you know, I really liked Sané when he was at Man City. I think he was just a little bit young for that team. Like, he just hadn't matured enough to do what Pep needed him to do week in and week out week out. But man, there, there is like, he's, I don't think he's in the top 10 players in the world. He's in my top 10 of personal favorites to watch uh, on the field. I just think that he he's magic, but um, you know, you go back to Bayern, you go back to Munich, obviously some tough injuries there, um, but it's all for grabs. You go and you win and you advance. That's the beauty of going in tied on, on aggregate. Um, so we'll, we'll just, it'll just be a really big gut check in my opinion for Arsenal. I think, I think they go on to lose. I think tons and tons and tons of pressure. They lose, is- I think the title's over as, as yeah. much as they don't correlate. I generally think if they win, I think that spurs on the rest of the season. This getting this law, lo- this loss would be, I think it's like, I, that- I think it, I think it does a lot more than this Villa game for sure. Oh, yeah, ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I just think that it's going to be a big pressure game and we'll see what happens, you know, um, because, you know, I, I don't know. We'll just see which version of Arsenal show up uh, in that. Um, the are other. Are we doing predictions or no? Yeah, let, fuck it. Let's do it. Thanks. Go ahead. We'll let you go first. I'm going to go to one Arsenal. I think that we come out with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder after losing this weekend. And this this team hasn't lost two games in a row in in a minute. Um, and, and they don't want to let that happen. And again, like I said before, you know, both goals were off of two center back mistakes that don't happen often. So they're going to have to find another way to score. And, you know, like you said, with those injuries, they're going to have a lot less speed. Sokka is going to have a lot more room to run with the ball. Um, so I, I think us two, one. And I'm going to go three, nothing Bayern. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that Byron's just going to get an early goal. Yeah, bro. I, I think that, I think that Byron's going to get an early goal and then Arsenal's going to have to chase, like they're just going to have to. And, um, I don't think that it's going to be three goals in the first half, but I think it's going to be one goal early and then like another goal in the 60th and then like a consolation goal in the 85th or some shit. Um, 
We're going to get like your diaper on for this one. Um, I think this is going to go to pens, fellas. Yeesh. The, the reason I say that is because when I look at – Free footy. When I look at one-game knockouts, like one game for it all, it's like Simeone, obviously maybe Pep, Jose Mourinho, Thomas Tuchel's in that list for me of guys that if you need a result in one game, it's not over the span of a league. It's not about consistency. If you need a result in one game, Tuchel has consistently proved that he can do that in the Champions League with Dortmund. He won it with Chelsea. I just trust his ability. But I also think this Arsenal team is good. I think it's going to be a very similar game to what we saw. I don't know if we're going to see the amount of goals, but I could see very much a 1-1, maybe maybe 2-2 when it goes to extra time. I honestly think Arsenal will win if it goes to pens because they've been there. But I, I truthfully could see extra time unless mm. Arsenal does what they've done so many times this year. I think the key to this game is going to be, can Arsenal from the first 10 minutes do what they've done consistently this year? And like, kind of like, I guess it's kind of a little bit like a German reference, but like Blitzkrieg. It's like, if they can just fucking go from the jump, jump all over Bayern and not let Bayern settle in at home, I think that could be the game. But the more that Bayern settles in and can deal with sort of the Arsenal possession that they're going to have, I think that they can get a, at least take it to extra times. So I'm going to go pens. I think Arsenal's going to win on pens, but I just, wow. I, truthfully, I trust Tuchel. Like Tuchel in these, in these one game things, he's so good at, at getting guys to do what they need to do. Spicy. Spicy. It'll be a spicy watch. I believe that's Wednesday that, uh, that this game is. Um, going over to the other Wednesday game, which was just as fun to watch City banger. versus after Madrid. After banger. After banger. After Pick banger. your poison of your favorite goal of this game, man. 3-3. Three, three. We got an absolute treat. Um, the Bernabeu was rocking. Um, they... They're so fun, and perhaps uh, one of the most underrated players in the world is Rodrigo. Um, I don't, I don't know why. I guess he's never been up there for me of guys that I rate that highly. Maybe it's just because I've always compared him to Vinny, and I just prefer Vinny so much. But that guy's a baller. He's so good. Um, it's just a, it's just two of the best teams in the entire world battling it out. So um, thoughts on the first leg? Thoughts on the second leg? I want the same game. Just give yeah. me the game. Give me 4-4. Just, four, four. Just, just do it all over again. Th- this one was fun. And honestly, with these two games going at the same time, it's I had both of them on. It's very tough to, like, break down both of the games just with watching both. But these were two teams that were just like – it was literally like a boxing fight, throwing heavyweight blow after heavyweight blow. Like, City dominating possession. Madrid on the counterattack with Vinny and Jude and Valverde and Rodrigo. It's like – these two teams are just like they're they're gifts to football, just the way that they do things and go about their business. I think this is like the peak top two teams over the last what five years, probably in the world. I don't know how to predict this one. Like I really don't, because City may dominate possession, but how many times have we seen Madrid be like down two goals and score three goals in ten minutes and be like, oh no problem, they they were going to do this all the time. Yeah. Um, I I don't even know what to predict. I'm going to say Madrid's going to win, so City gets bounced. Yeah. I, the the only the only uh like things swaying it one way or the other. It's just the fact that it's, that it's at the, at the, at the Etihad. And I think that that's going to give city a leg up um, on the game. But just like you said, it could go anyway. Like I could see this one going to pens. Um, I, I don't think that it's going to be a blowout one way or the other. What I think does that the this bracket look like, like who did like, what is it? Oh, so I guess it would be city arsenal if they both advance. Right. I think so. I think, th- I think uh-huh. that, yeah, which would, which would also just be nuts. Um, but this game was so fun. I, I can't wait to watch this one. Um, I'm going to be glued uh, on Wednesday. It'll, it'll be a, it'll be I, a I think Kyle Walker's back, too. Yep, and John Stones. Yeah. Back so. to being healthy. And, and to be fair, we didn't even mention him. Phil Foden was disgusting in that game. Um, yeah. The second, I forgot if it was his second goal or if it was just the team's second goal where he just banged it in from outside the box. Just uh, just an absolute rocket. It's just so fun to watch. Well, Verde's finished, too? The volume? Yeah. Like, holy shit. It, it, it's just... I think that's the the goal that actually won goal of the the like match week for the Champions League Valverde's was, but I mean three of them could have been that goal. Um, we go to Dortmund Atletico. Um, this I would say it was the least exciting of the four games, but still had a lot of fireworks. Uh, Griezmann continues to just be awesome. Um, his assist uh, in this game to just dink it up and over the defender for Lodi to run onto it. Um, that man is still at the very top of his game. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be another three or four years before we see him in the MLS. He's uh, he's so good. I 
I don't think that Dortmund's going to be able to do it. Uh, Simeone is, is in a one game, you know, final. He he's up a goal. I don't think that I don't think that Madrid's going to let go of this one. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in agreement. I, I always yeah. think the one game knockouts are coaches. Who's the better yeah. coach? I think with with a one goal lead, you're going to see the dark arts come out early. It's going to be the tenth oh. minute, and they're going to be rolling on the ground, wasting time. It's just it's it's how Atletico always ends up in these spots every year. Yeah, and they're always competitive with it. Uh, and finally, we have Barcelona PSG, which was so much more fun than I thought it was going to be. I thought I didn't think that it was going to produce anything. My player of the goddamn match is Pau Cabarsi, the 17 year old center back from Barcelona. Um, just unbelievable. He was absolutely immense in this game. Uh, he just couldn't do anything wrong, man. Like I, the composure at 17 years old is uh, not something that we've seen. Uh, yeah, in a, in a weekend we have you know defenders slipping all over. You have a 17 year old just pocketing Mbappe in the front three of of PSG. Um, but a lot to play for for uh, for Barcelona when they go back home to the Camp Nou. Um, I think that Barcelona will see it out. Um, Pedri came on, had an amazing assist. Um, I think he'll start in this next hit this next leg. And um, I think Mbappe has a lot to prove. So you might see him go on demon mode, but yep. uh, I think that he has a lot to prove. I interestingly enough, I mean, he has a lot to prove in this, in this round. Holland has a lot to prove in this round. Jude has a lot to prove in this round. So um, who knows what we're going to see from these guys. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I, I think Mbappe is going to do what he does. I, I think Barcelona not got lucky. But I just think it's tough to replicate, even though they're at home. You've seen Mbappe do it in the World Cup. You've seen him do it on the biggest stage. I don't know, man. It's tough because Mbappe is Mbappe, but PSG finds a way to choke these away all the time. Um, yeah. I get it. Lucas, any predictions? I'm going to go extra time just for fun again. Yeah, why not? For, free, <laughs> I'd, I'd free love footy. to see some free. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, dude. You could literally, it's like throwing a dart at a dartboard for, for what the score could be. It could go so many different ways, depending on how the lineups look, depending on what players show up. But I think we're all in agreement that Mbappe is going to probably go crazy. So uh, your player of the match um, is going to have to step up again, and we'll see if the nerves of being at the Camp Nou will be too much or not. But the fact that Xavi is already not going to be the coach next year. And the fact that they could, like, if they if they win this game, they're either going to play Dortmund or Atletico in the semi. Like, the fact that he's gone and can make yeah. the Champions League final is insane. Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, well, that wraps us uh, for this week, gentlemen. Uh, want to remind the listeners that this podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. Um, and Manscaped is committed to raising awareness and giving support for fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer. That's why they'll be donating $50,000 to the Testicular Cancer Society. Help save lives and balls by going over to manscaped.com slash TCS, sharing their funny educational check yourself video. And while you're at it, grab grab 20% off and free shipping with code MECCA20. That's M-E-C-C-A 20. Um, because like a famous American philosopher once said, take care of your chicken, your balls, and your mentals. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for supporting. Uh, check us out on all of our socials, the Instagram, the Twitter, the TikTok, uh, and check us out on YouTube. And with that being said, we'll see you next week. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers, lads.